A wonderful morning to viewers across the world. I am Adams on the sports segment of the weekend show. And uh, exciting news across um, Abuja, MK Abuja, Nigeria, as the Super Falcons of Nigeria were triumphant against um, the Bayana Bayana of South Africa yesterday in the MK Abiola Stadium, playing in the final round of the Olympic qualifiers for Paris 2024. The game started off as an exciting matchup between both parties who are not strangers to meeting each other. But um, as the game ran on into the 43rd minute, um, the jersey number 19 was brought down, Chiwendu Hiozu was brought down in the box 18, and which presented a penalty for the Super Falcons of Nigeria. And that penalty was you know, simply converted by the Super Falcons captain, Rashida Lajibadi, the Atletico Madrid feminine um, player who plays in Spain. Ahead of the match in the... In, in the pre-match press, as she spoke about, this was going to be a revenge match, and the captain stepped up to the party when she was called. After the match, uh, you know, um, at the post-match conference, we had um, speaking to Coach Randy Waldrum. He talked about the tactics of the game and how the Super Falcons held their own against uh, an opponent who was strong-willed. But he also stated the fact that the Super Falcons dominated the game despite not scoring more than one goal. Uh, South Africa's um, coach, um, Desiree Ellis, also spoke about the you know, the perfect, almost near perfect um, officiating from the referees in the center of the park as they did really well. While Senator John Anna, the Minister of Sports Development, spoke about how Nigerians should support the Super Falcons moving into the Olympics. Here is what they all had to say. Unfortunate not to have a two or three goal uh, victory tonight. Um, but I thought the team played very well. I thought defensively, considering uh, we had some new players in the back, missing uh, Plumpter and, and uh, uh, Demayan. I, I think uh, the back forward stood very strong. I, I can only remember, I'll have to look at the stats, but I only remember really two, two good opportunities that they had. Um, and so overall, I thought we could control the game. Parts of the things we wanted to do offensively, we did. Uh, as I said in the last press, press conference, we still have to finish these opportunities. but. You know, now we're at this point where there's one match left and the bottom line is we just need to go get a result. I thought the keeper fouled Jermaine because Jermaine was in between her and the ball. But I thought the officiating was very good. I thought the match officials handled the game perfectly. I thought everything, everything that they, the decisions that they made was spot on, was spot on. You cannot fault the referee for that because I still have to have a look at the footage, but it's, that's my opinion. Where she got in front of uh, the goalkeeper and the goalkeeper trying to get to the ball, shoved off the ball. So in my view, I thought that was a penalty, but the officiating was very good. All right, um, that was the minister, that was the coach of the Super Falcons and the um, Bayana Bayana, the minister of sports, also spoke about the Super, uh, Super Falcons of Nigeria getting the needed support ahead of the match in Abuja. The, the fans came out in mass to support the Super Falcons and they will be expected to go back to South Africa on Tuesday to play the return leg against their opponent. Notably that whoever qualifies from that game at the final round will go into the Group C of the Women's Olympic Football Group stages where they will be playing against Japan, Spain or Brazil. So wait till Tuesday, 9th of April, for the Super Falcons of Nigeria to go to South Africa to see how they would fare in this return leg of that encounter. All right, still in football, we'll now move to the Premier League as it was a midweek of spectacle across the Premier League. It was such fascinating matchups in the Premier League where Manchester City took on uh, Aston Villa with Phil Foden scored a hat-trick. And on the other side of town, we had Cole Palmer of Chelsea who also scored his first career hat-trick for the Blues. The man on fire, scoring 16 goals for Chelsea this season with eight win penalties. And undoubtedly, he would go down as Chelsea's best player of the season. Um, the match was also graced by Argentine winger Alex um, Ganacho, was, Alejandro Ganacho was also sublime in that game. Before Cole Palmer stole the show at the closing minutes of the game, um, Ganacho was substituted out towards the ending of the game, thinking he had won that game for his club. Before the cold, cold Palmer, as it's being called, also on um, um, the other side of town to at the Anfield Stadium, we had um, Alex McAllister, who also stepped up to the party for Liverpool. And this will not be the first time in five straight games he scored in one, assisted two, and scored another one against Sheffield United. It's been a magnificent run for um, in the Premier League. The midweek was such a spectacle. We also had Arsenal, who played Luton Town with 
captain Odegaard getting on the scoreboard and an own goal um, for, um, for, for Arsenal on the looting down. But now this is how the table stands. Liverpool are on top with 70 points after 30 matches played. Arsenal sits second with 30 matches played and 68 points. Our Manchester City defending champions are in third position with 67 points. Still moving on, we're still in football. The Champions League will return on Tuesday and Wednesday, respectively, as we are going to have matchups across Europe. As Arsenal will be playing Bayern Munich, Manchester City will be playing Real Madrid, and Barcelona will be playing PSG, Atletico Madrid will be hosting Borussia Dortmund. Um, that's the fixtures up on the screen. Arsenal will be hosting Bayern Munich in an encounter in their first quarterfinal matchup after six years. Real Madrid at the Santiago Bernabeu will welcome um, Manchester City yet again for another consecutive season. Let's see who will be triumphant in that encounter. At the Wanda, Meta, at the Wanda Metropolitano, we will be seeing the black and yellow boys visit Atletico Madrid in Spain. How will that match pan out? Let's wait and see. And Paris Saint-Germain with their coach, Luis Enrique, who was the former coach of Barcelona, who won them the treble, will be hosting the um, Blaugranas in Paris. Now moving on to the final um, headline of the day, we move to tennis as the Rolex uh, Masters 1000 will be kicking off today in Paris. It's going to be a magnificent feat at the Roque Brune um, Captain Martin in, in France. It's going to be spectacular. We have lots and lots of top seeds who are going to be gracing that event. Unfortunately, the King of Clay, Rafa Nadal, will be absent as he has also withdrawn due to injury. Andre Rublev, now currently on your screen, um, defending champion, will see if he can keep his targets going. They'll be playing for a prize money of 5 million, 779 and 335 euros at the end of the Masters. And it's also going to be a world-ranking game, preparing them to go into the Olympics. We'll see how that pans out. Um, the Olympic Games Paris 2024 will be in the minds of the best men's tennis players in the world coming from 7th to 14th of April, Monte Carlo, Monaco. That's because the Monte Carlo Masters is the first major red clay event of the 2024 calendar. The same surface used for the Roland Garros, the site of the Olympic tennis event starting in July. World number one, Novak Djokovic, is a two-time champion at this competition in 2013 and 2015. But his Australian Open champion, Yannick Sinner, who feels like the player to beat so far this season, is 22 to 1 starts, earning him three titles, including last week's giant triumph at the Miami Masters. Djokovic and Sinner are joined by Carlos Alcaraz as perhaps the top three favorites. But another Spaniard is an 11 time champion, um, Rafael Nadal, has withdrawn, citing, My body won't allow it. Um, he said that on social media while Daniel Medvedev rounds up the top four while defending champion Andrei Rublev, Rublev Olympic gold medalist Alexander Zverev and rise, rising Danish star Olga Runa are all in the top eight waiting to claim the Rolex Masters title in clay. Well, that's all I have for you on the sports segment of the weekend show. And... Um, just not to leave you now, the Champions League will be coming back this week. We also have matches to be played in the Premier League this weekend and across um, major Europe, um, European teams too. We have La Liga coming up, we have Syria coming up, and that is where we'll leave you this weekend. But I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to leave you with Emeka and Gloria on the Poetic Interlude.